everybody. Welcome back to FoxNews.com Live. Thanks for staying with us today. As promised, we have some fine gentlemen used to play in the NFL. You know, I'm a big football fan, so this is really a, a treat to have them here with us today. And, of course, we have beautiful, lovely, talented Jennifer Smith with us <laughs> as you. well. Now, you are the Director of Player Programs for PAST. Tell us about yes. the organization and what that stands for. Well, PAST is an organization that provides comprehensive medical and behavioral health services to retired athletes. The program started out providing services to retired NFL players is the need is is great because of the lack of insurance and the lack of disability claims that are approved so there's a lot of walking wounded so comprehensively whether it's neuro neurological orthopedic uh, painkiller addiction which we see a lot of internal medicine um, we're treating a, a player for liver disease so it's a team of doctors that are independent doctors that have come together as, as a small unit to really troubleshoot and take care of these problems hands-on on a pro bono basis for mm -hmm. those players that can't afford it or don't have insurance and both Randy Grimes and Ray Lucas are here today are patients have passed. Fantastic okay so gentlemen tell us a little bit about uh, your experience in the NFL each of you and that you know what services you're able to benefit from. Well uh, I've played 10 years with Tampa Bay and um, I left I, when, while I was in the game I learned to medicate to stay on the field you know I did whatever it took to stay out there and play. Sure. I took that addiction that I got while I played in the NFL, I took it into my retired life and that's when things got unmanageable. And had it not been for past and behavioral health of the Palm Beaches, you know, I, I was really at the end of, of my rope and I needed all the help I could get to save my life. And uh, those two organizations helped me the most and, and it's just uh, snowballed into this huge thing where you know, I'm able to go out and help other retired players now. You know, it's still such an issue out there among retired players, and that's pain pill dependency. And, uh, you well, know, for chronic pain for management, chronic, when absolutely. you get hit like that every day, let alone practice, forget even pads, whatever. I mean, I have uh, several girlfriends who are married to uh, former football players. They had to literally go get another place to live because... Their husbands can't walk up and down the stairs anymore. They said, we got to get a, a home that's one level, you know, terrible at pain problems, chronic pain problems with it. You know, he's having a hard time like, playing with even his little boys and stuff, doing things because his knees are shot. You know, and they said, where are you going to go from here? Because it's all fun and games when it's any given Sunday, right? And then all of a sudden, when there comes a point in time, how are you prepared? Are you well prepared to retire, to have a life after football? Well, my, my story is... I've had the chronic pain. I've had back surgery. I have uh, fused four and five vertebrae and artificial disc on top of it. it was my first back surgery. And then about two months ago, I had a three and steel plate and six screws put in my neck. Oh, my gosh. But at the same token, like you said, like Randy, I was a guy who knew that my job was on the line every day. If I wasn't yeah. out there, you're out of sight out of mind. So when the doc told me the first time, listen, there's two ways you can handle your back. You can play with it or you could, you know, get fusion and you're done. But I have to tell you, you could be paralyzed. And I said right to his face, I don't really care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. Right. So upstairs in the office where the, the suit and ties up are. Right here of you. With Dr. Latuga there, with the suit and ties are, everybody's, it's a business. But when the guys that are on the actual field, it's life. And well, with yeah, Randy's it's your job, case it's too. your life, it's supporting yeah. your family, it's not letting down your teammates. You want to sit there and be the guy that's like whining, complaining about it for very good reason, by the way, for serious injuries that, you know, would cripple anybody else. Trust me. Um, are you going to go in and play and suit up? It's tremendous pressure to do that. And, and, it, and I, I don't know about Randy, but when you're standing next to the guy that depends on you to be in the huddle. Oh, yeah. I mean, as a former quarterback, I'm, I'm sure it's the same way. Like, you guys depend on you. I, I got 10 guys when I'm in the huddle that are looking to me to make sure I'm making the right decision. Yeah. Can't let them down. It's tremendous responsibility, you know, and, and you become and, very and, you close know, when to you your come family. from an era where there's no guaranteed contracts, no guaranteed oh, money, you yeah. know, your job's only as good as your last performance, mm -hmm. then you do, you do whatever it takes to stay on the field. And when uh, teams are leaving drug safes open and they expect it on the down low for you to do whatever it takes to get on the field, yeah. then you do it. And, um, you know, I learned from the best, the older guys that were there, that this is how it, that was This is the how end. business is done. That's how you do it. Right. And, uh, and, you know, what you don't ever think about, though, is what's going to happen when it's all over? Here's After a, a 10-year career, what are you going to do with this addiction? The funny right. part, I actually would get, you know, the doctors there give you, take two of these, three of these, two of those at nighttime. So after I left the NFL, I went to go see a back doctor, and I said, I need a script for Vicodin. So I get the script, and I get all the way down to my car, and I looked at it. It's for 30 pills. 
So I got out of the car, I walked back upstairs. I said, You're like, what's what do you this? want me to do with this? I'll be done by Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Three days. Really? I'll be done in the morning. What do, you, what do you mean? You'll be done in three days. I said, I'm 10, 11 a day just so I can get by. I said, so you need to. And he's like, those doctors wow. aren't comfortable in prescribing. Well, like when that. Ray came in, it's I had worked with Randy first. And Randy came into past, and he was taking about 600 pills a month. Oh, wow. Plus sixteen, and that's grand. expensive. You just try and yeah. get that. Well, yeah, yeah. And, then, and that's had a lot to do with the unmanageability that my life had become. Yeah. And he needed a knee replacement, and he couldn't get it. His knee was out sideways. He waited how many years for a knee replacement? Well, Fifteen plus. Fifteen years. So you know, unless you can treat the chronic pain and the painkiller addiction and behavioral health piece simultaneously, you're going to fail every time because you had a couple of failed attempts at rehab as well. And how about if you have surgery then? Yes. You're going to need some pain management after that, but if you're trying to, like, you know, get off the pills or reduce the, the usage well, and, of them. And, and, that and was what that. happened around I went to yeah. behavioral health. Department. I was so toxic at the time, they couldn't replace my knee. Past couldn't do their job. So I went to behavioral health of the Palm Beaches, and... I did the detox, I went, had the knee replaced, and then came back to behavioral health and, and, and finished my treatment program. Since then, you know, I've started working for them and started this uh, sports interventionist slash recovery coach deal for professional athletes. And that's what the message, you know, I just wanted to remove the stigma that, you know what, this happens, it happens to everybody. Yeah. 22 million Americans are hooked on prescription payments. Oh, no joke. And football population is no different. It's okay to say, you know, hey, I've got a problem. I'm addicted to pain medication. Just come in because there is hope. And you kind of don't think it's going to happen, right? Because you're just like, oh, I'll take this and then, you know, I'll feel better and I'll just like move off it. And all of a sudden your system is so hooked on it, so dependent. You're like, where did this problem come out of? Well, with like, Randy, um, interestingly enough, what we learned with Randy's case is after his surgery, immediately after they couldn't medicate him because his right. tolerance level was so high and he ended up in the ICU. Um, Ray, who's, who's currently received the surgery through past and you've been working with Dr. Ficazio yep. and mm -hmm. Dr. Patel and managing his medication right now, as soon as the jet season's over, he'll become a patient and work with Randy at Behavioral Health and go through the, the process of getting himself off a large there, quantity of pain There's just no way you cannot be addicted. I mean, when you're spending $2,300 a month, and I was, he was on six, I was on about 350 prescribed by a doctor. You can't be intelligent or not dumb to know that there's going to be problems afterwards. Right. So in the end, this is why PASS is so fantastic. It's not, it's a one-stop shop. They're not only going to fix your pain, they're going to fix your head, you know, the severe depression that comes with the chronic pain, which I have. They're going to fix your addiction, which I have. I mean, it's that big of a deal because you know, when you look at the NFL, they say, oh, we have programs, but there's so much red tape. By the time if I would have waited, I probably would have been dead. That's away. the criticism that I oftentimes hear in my experience, like talking to players and doing interviews, is that, you know, they can't get the help that they need in a timely fashion. And this is, it's really, you know, kind of an, an emergency situation. Like, look, you had to wait to get your, you know, knee surgery, to get the knee replacement, and, and then try and get the help to get off the pills. But you couldn't do that, you know, get the surgery till you went to right. the behavioral therapy. It's very difficult. A lot of players feel uh, disenchanted and frustrated that they've been alienated, um, even from, like, you know, NFL, like Players Union, Players Association. It's a lot of red tape in all these Which things. Which I think is, they're hard to blame as well, just yeah. for the mere fact that this is a union that's supposed to be for the players. And they're trying to, and I understand that, you know, the NFL wants control of it, and the players union wants control of it, so you got two sides bumping heads, but there's all of us guys in the middle that need mm -hmm. treatment now. Well, and that, second, that was and they the, won't get together. That was kind of the beauty of, 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 I mean, Dr. Ficazio's vision. I mean, right. here you have an independent physician in a little town in New Jersey and a bunch of other world-class physicians coming together to fill this void because it's the speed, too, because they can't wait. And when you're in chronic pain, you're depressed. And you, seven doctors How could you not be? I mean, you, don't really, have yeah. the, you don't even have the seven, ability to... Yeah. Seven doctors. The first, when I first called, because I was trying with the NFL a lot, and I wasn't getting anywhere. And then somebody called me outside and said, don't tell him I told you this, but called Jen Smith. Oh, that's so nice. And we're so talking about an $8 billion industry, and they can't put together a program But that's my like problem this. with yeah. it. I think it's so frustrating. It's downright disrespectful because, they, you know, it's like use and abuse, push it through the system, and then when you're done, it's like, okay, sight, good luck. Yep. Good luck. And, and we're talking about the guys that made the game what it is What today. it is let's, today. Let's take care of those guys. And they're out there. They're hurting. 
and that's the kind of guys that we're trying to reach. Yeah, right and you're trying, and how about yeah. outreach as well to the people who are playing and stuff even right now to say, hey, well, we're going to be there someday. This, right. Right? They're going to be and, there and someday. They could, they, every single player will probably tell you, no way, I'll never be like Ray Lewis. I won't be like Randy Grimes, but I'm here to tell you right now, they will be sitting oh, in, 100%, the seat, sad, in his shoes, sad. in my shoes, but I just think that this is what pass brings out. There's guys out there watching this broadcast the NFL, go visit the website. Yeah, they let's talk about a shout out for the and website. And you here that Ray's coming down to Florida as soon as the uh, yep. football season's over, yep. right? Yep. And um, also, a special thanks, Dr. Uh, William Focasio, who's a past founder and medical director for the pro bono work that, you know, that he provides. And I know that you, you both um, have a relationship with him, and that's fantastic. So people can go to the website to get more information. Yes. Ask for help. Any yeah. former players out there that's hurting. And they're getting the runaround. It's uh, Debbie, it's www.passusa.com. Okay. No yeah. And uh, that's, you know, also hopefully to reach the players that need the help because that's very difficult, the outreach piece. Absolutely. Because we want to remain an independent organization. We, we don't do. want, we don't, yeah. You we're, don't want to get tied up We are independent. <laughs> you know what? Stay and out of so that. what you need is you need a steady flow of players and thankfully Ray and Randy and some of our other players. Well, are. you guys are great representatives. Such much. a pleasure to have you here. Jennifer Smith, thank you thank so much you for what so you much. do as well. Randy Grimes, Ray Lucas, two NFL greats. You had him right here on Fox <laughs> News. How you like that? All right, boys.